now add and subtract rational expressions. Remember, rational expression is a fraction. So let's add and subtract fractions. So I'm going to real quick put a little note here. If, if you were going to add 2 sevenths and 3 sevenths together, they are ready to be added because they have a common denominator. And when they do, you're allowed to add their numerators. So 2 plus 3 in this case is 5 over that common denominator. The problems that we're going to address in this particular segment are all going to have common denominators. So we're just going to address the adding the numerators, the subtracting the numerators, and reducing the answers. That's all we're going to address. Um, they already have a common denominator. So I've got a couple problems written up here already. These two fractions have common denominators, so I'm ready to add their numerators. And 3 plus 5 adds to be 8 over that 2y. And what you have to remember to do is, like we did when we were simplifying rational expressions previously, if there's a factor that can be removed, top and bottom here, I have to do that. So 2 goes into here once, and 2 goes into there 4 times. And my final answer for this particular problem is 4 over y. So please, don't forget to, to reduce after the fact. These two fractions, they have a common denominator. It is x plus y. So I'm ready to add their numerators. So this term can be added to this term because they're like terms. And 1x plus 1x is 2x. And then this term and this term right here are like terms, and they can be added. A minus 3y and a positive 5y adds to be a positive 2y over my common denominator. And I'm pretty proud of myself. I think I'm all done. But what you have to remember to do is you have to look at that and say, I wonder if I can factor that at all, and then maybe simplify this expression. Oh, geez, that numerator has a common factor of 2 in each of those terms. So I better factor that 2 out. And when I do, I'm going to need an x plus y over here as a binomial. And my denominator is 1 times x plus y. Or in its factored form, that is, that is what I have. And so, lo and behold, this problem, when I remove those common factors, the result is always 2. No matter what x and y are, you can put a 500 in there for x and a 1,263,000 in there for y. And you'll get an answer of 2 no matter what. This is a um, you know, simplified version after I've added and subtracted and then um, simplify that final expression. Let's look at a couple more. I'm going to put them side by side as well because they have similar characteristics. So let's look at 2 over a. And then I'm going to put the other problem up that we're going to do here in a minute too. These two problems have denominators that look a, a lot alike, but they're opposite in sign. So what I like to say is let's multiply top and bottom of these fractions, because I can multiply the top and the bottom of any fraction anytime I'd like by the same number. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator by a negative 1 and the denominator by a negative 1, so that this will become a positive A, and it will match that denominator. Uh, again, I kind of do a funny little, I show you a funny little one here when I'm doing this. I can multiply any number by the number 1 whenever I want. Any number can be multiplied by 1. You still get the same results. It's going to look different, though. This 5 is going to become a negative 5. And the a, negative a times a negative 1, is going to become a positive a. And now I'm allowed to go ahead and add those two fractions. And so their numerators add to be a negative 3 over that common denominator of a, and there's nothing I can do to reduce that. So remember, if you need to and want to, multiply a fraction by the same thing on top as on the bottom so that you can get common denominators. You're welcome to do that. So this x minus 3 and this 3 minus x are not the same thing. They're opposites. So I'm going to multiply. Um, the numerator by a negative 1 and the denominator by a negative 1 in this fraction. So that this denominator, a negative 1 times a negative x is going to be a positive x. And a negative 1 times 3 is going to be a minus 3. That denominator will now match that denominator. You're, you're kind of distributing. So a negative 1 times 2x is a minus 2x. 
And a negative 1 times a negative 5 is a positive 5. And finally, I'll just recopy the first fraction, and I can now add these two numerators together because they share a common denominator. And 3x minus 2x is 1x, and 1 plus 5 is 6 over the common denominator of x minus 3, and whatever you do, don't try to be reducing those, they can't be factored. And in their factored form, they are 1 times that and 1 times that. You can't be crossing off the x's and maybe reducing those to a minus 2. No, no. So my answer is x plus 6 over x minus 3. Doesn't need the parentheses necessarily. I just wanted to show you why you can't reduce. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do a couple more in this clip, and we'll be done with adding and subtracting where the um, denominators are alike. Okay. This problem is a subtraction problem. We haven't done a subtraction problem yet. But they do have common denominators. And whenever you subtract in algebra, you add the opposite. Or if you could think of this as being a, a polynomial and you're going to subtract or multiply everything in there by a negative 1. So this is going to become an addition problem. I'm going to add the opposite of all of those. So a negative x squared and a positive 3x and a minus 7. So I have to change their signs, the, the numerator only of the fraction that follows. If I want to subtract these two fractions, I have to add the opposite. I'm just going to copy this fraction down. And now I am ready to combine my like terms. So 3x squared minus 1x squared is 2x squared, and 5x and 3x it had to be 8x. And a minus 4 and a minus 7 it had to be a minus 11 over that 2x minus 3. Now I always pause to kind of go, mm, I wonder if that can be simplified at all because I'm real happy with myself. I've got an answer. The only way that this could be simplified is if this could be factored into something that had 2x minus 3 in it. It would have to be that. This would have to be factored into something that had 2x minus 3 in it. And there's no way that's going to happen, because I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a negative 11, and 3 times nothing will give us 11. So I'm done. I, I, I also could use the AC method, and I could look for two numbers whose product is a negative 22, and adds to be 8, and go through that long process of factoring that. If it works, it doesn't. And seeing if I can reduce after that. Um, I'd just like to stick one more up here that is a subtraction problem with opposite denominators. And it's kind of a redundant situation. But I'd like you to see why. So first of all, these denominators are not alike. They are opposites. So I totally ignore that. That's how I, I, I deal with this. There's, a, there's other ways to deal with this problem. But I ignore that, and I tell myself that in order to subtract two fractions, the denominators have to be alike. So I tell myself that I have to multiply this numerator by a negative 1 and that denominator by a negative 1. So this is going to become a minus 3x, and the minus 3 is going to become a positive 3. And then down here, this minus 1 times a minus x is a positive x, and minus 1 times 2 is a minus 2. And I'm overjoyed now because their denominators match. So I'm ready to go ahead and subtract these two fractions. Sometimes in an effort to be a little bit quicker about my work, when I'm getting ready to subtract that numerator from that numerator, I'll just go and swipe, swipe with a different colored pen. So those signs have to be changed. So I'm going to add the opposite of those two. So this will become a positive and that will become a negative, and I'm ready to go. Well, what's ironic about this is I was subtracting something that had an opposite denominator, and look at those terms, 3x minus 3, and look at this 3x minus 3, son of a gun. Oh, well, I'd like you to see why I have to make those denominators become an x minus 2, and then it's a subtraction problem, so I have to add the opposite. 
the 4x and the 3x add to be 7x. And then I'll bring that minus 3 down. The reason I use colored pen is because for me, my color always prevails over the black. So um, that helps me to remember that the minus sign is the important sign. Um, I'm all set. I can't reduce that because I can't um, factor anything out of that 7x minus 3. We're going to go on in our next clip to add and subtract uh, rational expressions that don't have common denominators.